So here today, Zechariah chapter 9, verses 11 to 13. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. For I have bent Judah my bow, fitted the bow with Ephraim, and raised up your sons, O Zion, against your sons, O Greece, and made you like the sword of a mighty man. Why should people continue to languish in exile conditions when they can return? There are strong words of hope for God's people through his servant, Zechariah. God calls them back there to the blood of the covenant. That goes back to, you know, Abraham. Back in the book of Genesis, the covenant was ratified there with blood, and that has been renewed uh, down through time, and it's still current. If we join into that covenant, then we become children of Abraham. He says he wants to set the prisoners free from the waterless pit. Now, if you were stuck in a waterless pit, that was basically a death sentence because, yeah, you're in the pit, you can't get out, there's no water. That's a death sentence. So God says, I'm going to release you from the death sentence. And of course, the wages of sin is death. And so God is glad, though, he's very pleased to receive, to give us a gift of forgiveness, to help us receive that gift. And then, and then he's glad to forgive us and help us to go further, help us to come close to him. So God says to his people, return to the stronghold, return to Jerusalem. I will give you the blessings. Come on, come on back home. Now that the punishment is over, my blessings are going to come in double portion. Finally, in some very interesting imagery, God's people here are portrayed as, yes, weapons. Weapons. And, you know, as we work with him, as he cooperate with him, he will use us. We become instruments for his purposes. And, and it's voluntary, doesn't force us, but he wants us and we, we want to do it. So time's wasting. Let's find out what God wants and do it. There's another line in this that's quite interesting, really. It talks about the sons of Zion being raised up uh, to fight against the sons of Greece. And that is quite interesting because now the word under Greece there, we use that word, and it's in, it's in Genesis, it's in Isaiah, it's the word Javan, Javan. And that really is used all over in those places to talk about people from distant lands. So I don't think this is just talking about uh, just certain people from Greece. It's not what's going on here. All those people who are far away from him, are in a sense of war with him. They're, they're not sustaining his principles. And so he is, there's an opposition between those who go to selflessness and those who are pushing for what they want and living out their lives with what they want and pressing that away. So these things, these things, here they are in opposition. And God raises up people to be uh, markers for an unselfish kingdom. And these uh, other people are there doing their own thing. And so there's kind of a continual uh, distance between the two. There's a continual clash until this is resolved. And so God is working right now to get these things resolved. And he wants to use you and I to sort of demonstrate, uh, yeah, this is how you do it. This is how, this is how you can live in peace for eternity. There's a way to do it and you get to keep your free will. Our effectiveness in this work comes from our cooperation with God. You know, it is our weakness combined with his strength, our powerlessness combined with his unmeasured power and he's ready to use us and accomplish the things that he and we both want to see accomplished for his kingdom. If the bowstring fails or if the sword snaps in two, then it becomes an ineffective instrument for the kingdom. And if the people don't return to the stronghold, how will he deliver them from in, in the stronghold? You know, you've got to be in the fortification before the fortification is a protection to you. God is calling them back home to the land that he wants to bless. He, he wants them there. God wants you and I to be in places in our lives where he can bless us. So often he would like to bless us, but we're in a place where he can't bless us. We want to be alert. We want to be awake. We want to have our, have our antennae up, you know, so that we can figure out uh, what we're doing that's inhibiting the work of God in our lives. Cooperation with God is, is immensely important. God waits on us, God sends for us, God invites us, God empowers us, God will use us as we want to be used, but we need to cooperate with him. If you allow him, he will set you in the battle and make you strong in his strength. See you tomorrow morning.